so once again good morning to all of you before starting good morning kindly mute you all and uh, before starting today's topic we will have a discussion regarding the strategy topic last day we had simply discussed the last topic of the syllabus that is the nuclear energy so today we will also finish that and i had also told you that tomorrow i will show you the systematic diagram lapling diagram of the nuclear reactor where the nuclear reactions takes place to harness nuclear energy okay so now i would like to start today's class so last day we were discussing simply the difference between the fusion and fission reaction right so i think many points we had discussed if it is required then once again we will have a revision so i think some of the points were left then classes was automatically over so just see once again we will start from that revision so just see here regarding the nuclear fusion nuclear fusion and here it was nuclear fusion so first of all we had given the definition right in the case of fusion the splitting or breaking of a single or heavier due to the bombarding of slow neutrons into two or more light right in this process or reaction what happens a lot of a huge amount of energy is released so we had trapped that particular energy for the similarly fusion just opposite combination of two light and nuclear to form a heavier nuclear and in this process also a lot of energy was released and after that we had shown through the diagram splitting and combination and after that we had mentioned one is controllable it can be controlled that's why the next point will be it can be used to produce electricity next some very doubt given that chain reaction it is not chain reaction so we can also mention further we had seen that in the case of fission there is a chance of harmful radiation here in this case harmful radiation so whenever fission reaction takes place there is a chance of the production of the harmful reaction means it can cause harmful radiation and it does not cause after that you can also mention that the uh, uh, raw material required for the production of the nuclear fusion was uranium we had seen 92u35 this is the raw material but in this case hydrogen hydrogen is required which is easily available or which is unlimited we can produce we can prepare hydrogen in laboratory but this nuclear energy that is the uranium is very limited it is one of the rarest kind of the earth so it is in limited point so you can also write about the sources and at a last you can mention the example that the atom bomb atom bomb works on the principle of nuclear fusion check here atom bomb works on the principle of nuclear fusion and here hydrogen bomb hydrogen bomb and solar energy solar energy you all know how 
the burning sun is a made up of hot gases due to the burning of hot gases like the hydrogen two hydrogen combine together to form a helium that is a combination that is a helium reaction so these are examples as far as the capacity potential is confirmed this hydrogen bond is much more powerful than that helium so this is about the differences which we have discussed yesterday and to remaining i had discussed today also now i would like to have some of the discussion regarding its consequences environmental consequences what is adverse effect on our surrounding on our atmosphere so we have seen in the case of the renewable resources there is very less chance of the production of the pollution or it can damage our ecosystem also but when we had used a lot of non renewable then in that condition there is a chance of pollution it is not eco friendly it can damage our ecosystem as well as it is also very much harmful for the human being or all the living being or organism per se in this case we are also watching dangerous for the all whether it is plants and animals so it is handled very clearly so now i would like to show you by example just the laboratory to you just see i am in physics laboratory just see there is a uh, i have already visited physics laboratory i am here so i would like to show you the diagram of the nuclear reactor just see it is available in our laboratory just see this is atomic reactor diagram just see how the uranium rods have been used as a fuel just see this uranium rods this is the inside the nuclear reactor how the uranium rods have been converted in the form of just see steam this is the steam which is further sent to the steam to turbine and you have seen in the case of thermal and geothermal in both type of energy that how these steams can rotate the wheels or blades of the turbine of a generator when the turbine will rotate the generator it will produce electricity so this is one of the diagram or systematic diagram for the production of nuclear energy in atomic reactor just see you can take the screenshot and if you want to draw you can draw but it is not in our syllabus also this chapter is not in our syllabus so don't draw just see just for knowledge i have told you i have provided okay so now we will move forward this is regarding sources of energy if there is any problem and doubt you can ask otherwise i will now move with the chapters that is in our syllabus this chapter is not in our syllabus but we have gone to this so by today we have finished we have completed our whole syllabus whole book you have to complete the notebook on sunday you have to appear for the sunday test so up to saturday come up to friday you can complete your note copy as well as practical copy also we have performed all the practicals in the laboratory before online class during the offline class we have done if any remaining or anyone have not attended then again the school will roll open we will be taking the laboratory okay kisi ko koi dikkat hoga ji hum log lab mein aayenge because our, we have already completed our syllabus only revision work will be going on so you can have any problem you can get this so this is all about the chapter sources of now we will have the revision as per the syllabus authorized for us like 
electricity and magnetic effect of current so today we will have a discussion regarding the chapter electricity once again if anyone have missed the class we are starting today again so if there will be any problem you need to unmute yourself you can ask it should be two sided not only one side because i am just doing the revision work and revision work means what simply the important terms we are not going to define a b c d that's why i am telling you if you are having any problem but i will tell you in detail just see electricity mainly the formula starts with this i is equal to p upon q current electricity is simply electric current electric current see you need to know about this term this contains whole chapter all the characteristics variation value formula si unit and its effect so electric current is equal to charge divided by time so the word new is charge now it is not in your book that in detail that you have already studied in class 7 i will tell you each and every information regarding the charge so we know charge simply it is the flow of electrons as far as the charge is concerned we have gone through the two terms electricity first charges at rest charges in motion means what will happen if the charges will remain at rest and what will happen if it comes in motion and under what condition the charge will come into motion and when the charges come into motion we simply say electricity is flowing okay so now we will see this charge q can be represented as i into q current into time so this charge is simply the flow of electrons electrons we all know the one of the fundamental parts of the atom electron proton neutron in which the electron that revolves around the nucleus in different orbits as per the law of the square so here this flow of electrons we have to see its nature so our target is the charges are simply further made to move under a certain condition to become the electric current so here we will see how this charge can be produced because you know it is a unit coulomb coulomb c coulomb on the name of the scientist one of the famous scientists so we will just try to find the value of one coulomb how it can be written let's see it is equal to by so one coulomb will be one ampere into one second means ampere second i ampere times second now you need to know about the charge how can we generate the charge on a body so in our previous classes we have studied one of the simple observation that most of the students or people know that whenever a plastic pen is rubbed against the hair just like this it attracts the small bits of paper we have seen we have done it when you have taken some small bits of paper and when this plastic pen is rubbed against the dry hair and it is brought near the paper it will attract so actually what happens you can do, you can do this i can show you i can simply show you just see and take care there is some certain pairs pair means this is plastic pen instead of plastic pen if we rub it with the metallic pen it will not show so this and the hair should be dry if it is wiry so when it is just rub in dry hair it is brought near just see what is happening it will simply attract the small bits of paper just see it is a standing position it is in a standing position so this happens because during the rubbing of friction it gets the charges gets created on this 
so we have already learned about that how the charges are produced so we will learn in detail so that we can understand this chapter let's see methods of charging methods of charging methods of charging the first method by rubbing by rubbing or something called friction rubbing or friction we all know is it clear na just see second yes say conduction and third one was induction yes do you want to say anything ha ji bolo do you want to say something yes no okay so these are the methods through which we can charge a body and you have also seen how and which body can be charged you can't charge the metallic body so some of the cases for the insulating material like plastic rubber and also the first process or the method just i am going to only dictate just try to hear this is not in our syllabus but we have a basic concept of this thing rubbing is simply friction and for friction at least two surfaces are required so here whenever two suitable suitable means this pen is when rubbed against the hair if it is rubbed against this board against the wall it will not get charged so there are some of the certain pairs glass rod silk cloth have here okay glass rod silk cloth flannel okay you have heard such type of the names certain pairs are there so what happens whenever two objects will be rubbed against each other both will be charged only one charge will be produced no it will never happen always charges will be produced in pair charges are always produced in pair so when the glass rod is rubbed against glass rod and silk cloth then glass rod acquires positive charge silk cloth acquires negative charge so always it will be produced in pair one charge will not be produced and at a time one body can acquire only one type of charge the nature of charge is you all know two types of charge is are there positive charge and negative charge two charges these are the nature of the charge that have been identified earlier in the stage earlier we have seen many role of the scientists many physicians were there to get its nature so we are not going to discuss with the type of charge positive and negative will we are with produced in pair so one will acquire positive another will acquire negative and it will be also in the equal amount so charges are always produced in pair if glass rod has acquired plus five joule sorry not joule it is coulomb then the silk cloth will acquire minus five joule let's see equal and opposite charge so in short this can be defined as when two objects are rubbed against each other both get charged with equal and opposite amount of charge this method of charging is called friction or rubbing clear na now come to the second point these are introductory this is not in class 10 conduction conduction is simply by contact so here in this case what will happen if you are having two body one is charge another is not charge so you have to charge this body then this body can be charged with the help of this charged body 
first with the help of conduction method second with the help of detection method so we will see the process so how it happens sir and after seeing that process you can define automatically sir how can we write so now the second one is conduction test in conduction what is happening suppose this body contains positive charge means this body is charged and this second body is on charge it is not charged just see and you have to charge this body with the help of this so in conduction what happens this charged body and this uncharged body is kept in contact with each other means when there will be contact just see conduction means contact just there is a contact so this body shares the charges with the uncharged body sharing what will you share whatever you are having uh, you will share with me so it will share its charge with it after that what will happen this body will become positive charge or negative charge and this will also become positive charge and this method of charging is called conduction once again how can you define the method of charging in which uncharged body is kept in contact with the charged body then due to the sharing of charges between them the uncharged body become charged with same charge same charge means positive positive negative negative this method of charging is called conduction clear koi doubt hai to bolo no now see the third induction induction what will happen once again in induction this is charge this is uncharged you have to charge this body with the help of induction in induction this charged body positively charged suppose is placed nearby just see nearby nearby not in contact if it will come in contact then the method of conduction so what happens it is placed nearby then the on the front as the opposite charge will be produced due to the method of induction opposite induced word is there induced is self created automatically it will create this is the nature negative and on the front has negative opposite charge will be created and the back part or behind the same charge will be produced so this is extra charge this is extra charge this is front face front face this and this is back face just see so what happens you will say sir you have just explained that only at a time a body can have only one type of charge here at a time the body have two type of charge no this is extra charge so this extra charge will be removed by the process of arcing by the process of arcing the extra charge is removed in this way this body has a positive charge and the uncharged body will become negative charge that's logic during conduction positive charge created positive charge but by the method of induction positive charge can produce negative charge this is the difference so if you are having one type of charge with you you can generate both type of charge if you want to acquire opposite charge and if you want to acquire the same charge means if i am having negative charge and i want to have positive charge then induction method should be used if the same charge negative charge is required conduction method will be required so this is about the methods of the charging about which you have gone through in the junior classes now whether a body suppose i had just explained that when i rub this with my dry here it will be charged and the same process will be done with this duster 
made up of wood if it will be rough it will be not charred then sir how can you identify whether it is charred or not whether it is charred because when i have rubbed it it gets charred for very less time can anyone tell me is there any device that can tell us whether it is charred or not anyone anyone tell me any device electro okay very good very nice and correct reply electroscope this device this device detects the charge on a body means first of all it will tell you that yes body is charged or not nahi koi baat nahi if yes then also tells the nature of charge nature of charge means positive or negative agar ye body charge hai to kaun sa charge is par hai sir positive hai negative ho ke batayega it means electroscope is that device which detects whether a body is charged or not and if it is charged it also tells the nature of the type of charge present on it this is the information behind this device electroscope now as far as the types are concerned you have gone through the two types peat ball electroscope and second gold leaf electroscope hum logo ka class 7 ke book mein thoda sa iske bare mein bhi jaan lete hain second wala gold leaf kaise made up hai usme how the gold leaf is used so both are the different types of electroscope but both will be side so no need to go in detail how it works what is its role how it detects how it tells the time if it is required i had already told this now we will move forward type of charge and nature of charge we have discussed charge is already clear now the current i that is q is by p charge flowing per unit time just see current we have already defined all the physical quantity in two way first just see i am going to define this current charge flowing per unit suppose 12 coulomb of charge is flowing for 3 second what will be current 12 by 3 4 ampere so this with the help of q and Find the magnitude of the current. This formula only helps you to find the magnitude of that particular quantity. So in each and every case, two definitions we are trying to find. We have always used to know first the basic nature. If I have said charge flowing per unit time is equal to current, it means what? How much charge is flowing for how much time? Then we can find the magnitude of the current. but there is what is current it has not hammered in our mind like the resistance simply in the case of resistance what do we say we say r is simply resistance is p upon i potential difference sir kitna hai i kitna hai sir we can find the value of the resistance but this does not give us idea regarding the nature of resistance that what does it do so the second definition we say it opposes the flow of current This is the basic characteristic. Similarly, current is what? In short, we say flow of charge through any conductor is called current. That is the current. But when the magnitude is concerned, it is defined with respect to time, so that we can find the magnitude. If time will be not concerned, what will be the magnitude of the current? You can't say. So, if the amount of charge for different time, then magnitude of current will also vary. we have seen through the wires different amount of current flows so 
सकता है पर द रिक्वायरमेंट तो भी जो चलाई जा रही है ना सो दिस इज अबाउट द करंट एंड इट इज मेजर्ड इन व्हिच में एंपियर ऐसा यूनिट इज एंपियर इज आफ्स वन ऑफ द मेन साइन सो व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ वन एंपियर जस्ट इन फ्रॉम दिस वन कूलम वन सेकंड कूलम पर सेकंड मींस व्हेन वन कूलम ऑफ चार्ज फ्लो फॉर वन सेकंड थ्रू एनी कंडक्टर एनी सर्किट the magnitude of the current flowing through that circuit will be what 1 ampere so you need to define according to your own line ground statement yes with the help of this formula you can define definition you can also define the si unit so si unit is ampere 1 ampere by this you can say one coulomb of charge by coulomb and what are the device that measures the current 1 ampere 5 ampere 10 ampere 20 so that is simply ammeter ammeter is that device we have already gone through the book we have already completed syllabus this is revision so i am not going to tell you all the things we have said no whatever is required i am just saying the ammeter is a device that is always connected with the circuit We have already gone through the book that what is series combination, what is parallel. So what are the effect? Why it is connected in series? You can discuss. So we will also describe after the value of the resistance. On that we will say why it is in series, why not in parallel, or what will happen if you connect the ammeter in parallel? What will happen? Will it work or not? What will happen? We will also discuss. After discussing the characteristics of the resistor, okay. Till here, if there is any problem, anyone can ask. Still, five minutes are left. I think no problem should be there because these are simply the revision. Thank you. Okay. If ammeter is the device that measures the magnitude of the current, what does it do? It simply measures the magnitude. I. Then what does galvanometer do? Can anyone tell? What is the role of galvanometer? Yes, anyone? Two devices are here. Ammeter, galvanometer. Both are related to the current. If ammeter measures the magnitude of current, value of current, then what is the role of the galvanometer? Yes, anyone? No. Class में तो इतना भी पीड़ जाते हैं। सब पीड़ जाते हैं। अगर इस तरह का जवाब नहीं आता, इस सेवन का बच्चा जाम कर। No one can reply. okay it simply detects detects the presence of current ye detect karega circuit mein current hai ki nahi jaisa to device se naapte ho to device ye bhi hai during practical hum log touch nahi karenge current hai ki nahi jhatka lagega shock lagega to batayenge to so this device detects through its deflection either left or right it tells us if there is a deflection it means there is a current even the small current is available a small deflection is there so it will tell only the current is present and if how much present how much the quantity then you need to go to ammeter it will tell what is the magnitude theek hai clear hua ek bata diya ki current hai दूसरा बताएगा कि करंट है तो कितना मैग्नीट्यूड वैल्यू सो दीज आर रिगार्डिंग द करंट एसआई यूनिट मेजरमेंट इन व्हिच यूनिट नाउ वन मोर थिंग व्हेन द करंट फ्लोज थ्रू द कंडक्टर और एनी पार्टिकुलर सर्किट सो वी यूज अ वर्ड इलेक्ट्रिक सर्किट सो यू नीड टू नो अबाउट सम ऑफ द टर्म इलेक्ट्रिक सर्किट इलेक्ट्रिक सर्किट इलेक्ट्रिक सर्किट में जनरल मीनिंग करंट इज फ्लोइंग करंट वुड 
flow and current flow under a certain condition when the circuit is closed. This is the basic knowledge of the last thing I am telling you. If the circuit is closed, let's see, this is cell through which current is passing, this plus minus. Suppose here we have a huge R device, a bulb is there. Then bulb will only glow if the circuit is complete. Okay, I think now the class is over. So we will just discuss next day. Okay, good day to all.